Okay, so <clears throat> we had a little uh, few questions on a shot that I've done that I posted on Facebook and asked people questioned them on how they thought it was done. It looked a little bit like we was down in the depths of the ocean. And I questioned what did we use? So here's the answer. This is a cap tray. We've got a piece of light coloured card in there. Now the reason I put light coloured card in there and we've got the, the darker blue here, doesn't really matter what colours you can use, you can experiment, you can use anything. But I wanted to get the, the effect of the water so I wanted to blend a light colour with a darker colour and sometimes if you just got a dark colour we're going to create waves in this and the waves won't show up very well if you're just using a dark colour so some lighter articles in there will just help bring those out a little bit. So what we do and I've, you can see I've got some broken glass in as well so this is like plate glass it was actually an old shower piece of shower uh, that I used and the only reason all this came about was basically I was taking a photograph I wanted to do a product shot of a watch and I was going to use this glass just put a bit of water in the bottom of the tray and use this glass to put round the actual watch and I'll show you put the picture up on there so you can see the finished article so that's what I was using it for then I thought about putting more water in and just creating some background shots because it's nice to have lots of background shots when you're doing product photography or for any other reason you can use them as texture overlays you can use them for backgrounds and, and give you some nice effects or you can just create a picture because they can look quite creative so it's a great thing to have a play with when we're in lockdown uh, so basically you could use a base and you could use anything to put the water in something that's got a little bit of depth to it um, because we are going to be moving the water around and that was another question was how did we move the water well what I'm going to do now is to fill this up with water so we've got the card in there I've got the glass to hold the card down so that's important because otherwise the, the paper will float and move so I'm going to pour all the water in and when I've finished doing that we'll get back We'll get back and continue and I'll show you how we've done it. So now we've got the setup. We've got the, the water in there. And it's important with the, the level of the water. If you go too high, what will happen is when we move the water around, it's going to splash all the sides. So basically you want something under there. I've got this tray. Where it's actually the lid off a big container. Just to catch any water that's... It's going to go out outside don't usually get too much if you do the correct level but the water needs to be high enough to get some light on it because in this case and, and again I know people are going to say I haven't got one of these lights and I haven't got an expensive flash or anything like that really the light doesn't matter I'm using this because it's here um, but with any light source that you're using you you do need a quite um, a, a flash is good if you want to keep the movement frozen. Now, I don't know, and I'm going to try this later on, if you actually done a, a normal exposure, you could use aperture priority even, and get your focus, and take the shot. Actually, the movement might look nice. So, you know, it wouldn't be so harsh. So, we'll, we'll try that later and see how, how well that works. But if you want to freeze the action, then you need to use a flash really and it can be a cheap flash but it needs to be off the camera so you need a transmitter um, transmitters can be really cheap you can get those off uh, off ebay or off amazon and basically they just signal the flash so you put your flash on a stand and signal it from the camera you can even get a cable if the cable is long enough to, to do it that way um, so there's, there's different ways you can do it. Some cameras will actually don't even need that. There's a lot of cameras such as Canon if you use their uh, their flashes with your camera that you can actually get a signal off camera without if it's got um, the little head, the, the head flash on there which this hasn't got. But if you have you can actually send a signal to the flash to trigger it that way. So 
lots of options but it needs to be off the camera and the reason for that is because we don't want the light to be going in the same direction as the camera because if we do what we're going to create are little waves in the water and if you shoot waves and the lights come in this way you're not going to see the waves it's going to be completely flat so therefore what we really need is side lighting so if you're doing just a normal exposure and not using lights at all get it by the window and raise it up a little bit so the lights coming in from the side and this is really important if you're shooting anything with texture that's got texture in there you want to capture that texture you need the light to be low and you need it to be at the side and what happens then is you get a little ridge of water and what happens is because the light's coming this way it captures the shadow of the water and you get a define a definition in the texture of the water if it's overhead or from the front or even from the back coming directly at you you're not going to capture that because it's going to be flat there's going to be nothing to show the ripples in the water so you need side lighting if you want to capture the action you need a high shutter speed now some people may not be able to get that but there's a trick if you use manual flash get the flash set it to manual put it as close as you can to the object and dial in the very lowest power that the flash can shoot now this is a technique I'm using on this and the reason you do that is because it doesn't really matter what the shutter speed is then if you've got settings that when you take a picture everything is dark in other words the ambient light isn't coming into the, the equation the shutter speed is overtook by the duration of the flash in other words if let's say I've got a, a three second exposure and it's pitch black and I'll take a three second exposure it's not going to pick up anything in that three seconds if there's no light in the room but if I flash something for the for the amount of light that's coming out and for the duration that that light has been thrown out it will capture the image so therefore it's not the shutter speed that's capturing the shot it's just how long the light is on so if you need really fast uh, freeze the action shots and you're using flash that's the way you work you get the flash nice and close because it's not going to throw out a lot of light if you go to the lowest setting these will throw out a little bit more but if you got it at the lowest setting it's not going to throw out a lot of light but it will be a short duration if you turn your flash up high the light has to be on for longer to capture the actual image so you get a longer shutter speed in, in retrospect if you've got it down really low it's just a quick flash and you get your shot you get you freeze the action so for this one we're going to use the flash and the important thing is if I focus on this now I've got bits of broken glass in here and card and whatever and if I was to actually photograph that the focus wouldn't be on the water it would be on what's underneath but when we want to capture the waves on the water it's important that we're focusing on the surface of the water and not on what's underneath the water and that will vary a lot depending on the depth of the water so if you've got something like a little stick you can see that little tiny stick so I use this quite often it's just a little stick with a bit of red paint on it on the one end and I place that on the water so I plug it on the water you can keep it fairly still and I focus on that and then I know that I'm focused on top of the water so once I've got the focus I can use automatic focus or whatever I'll get the focus on that stick and then I'll switch the lens to manual focus and the focus will be locked because we're on a tripod and it's not going to move so long as you don't move your camera and you don't change your, your focal length of your lens or anything like that so that is how to get the focus that you need you need to play something on top of the water and that's also the same when you do water droplets obviously you want to get the focus where the water droplets are dropping down and that's what you do you put a stick in the water you hold it like that and then you focus on that and then take it out and if you've got a, a dropping machine or, or whatever you've got for the drips to come into the water that's how you get the focus in the right place so lots of little tips there so how do we move the water this was the question most people were asking do we stir it well we can't stir it because our hands will be in the way whatever and we're taking a flash shot high speed 
so therefore whatever's going on in here will be captured. So we need something that's invisible. What's invisible and blows air? As he dives out. And this is the answer. Now this is not mine because I haven't got much except on the chin. <laughs> so I have to borrow this. And basically, you move the water by doing this. And if you're doing that, you take the shot. So you can use different angles, different settings. Make sure, make sure that you didn't, don't get this too close to the water in case it splashes up. You don't want to get any water on electrical items, obviously. So be sensible. Don't try and get right down to the edge. And it's going to be in the shot anyway. So you need to keep that shot. Blow the water around and basically just take photographs. And I'll put on screen a few, of exam a few examples of what I've taken using this technique and just play, give it a go, see what you can create. Try putting different colours in the bottom of the water and weighting them down with something, you know, you can use a little stone or whatever, or even tape it. It won't, it won't, it shouldn't come off, uh, depending on what tape you use, once you put the water in, and then you can blow things around like that, keep taking photos, get lots of different shots. Now, I say I'll use this quite often do something like this and spend a few hours getting loads of different ones and just experimenting doing different things because if I'm doing product photography or any other type of photography and I want a nice texture to put over the top of the, the picture let's say I was doing an underwater, I wanted to create something that looked like it was underwater and it wasn't, you know, we're just, we're just trying to, to, to get an effect if I was to do this and then put this as a texture over the top and change the layer mode in Photoshop you could get some nice underwater effects using one of these pictures. You can create nice creative shots by just doing this straight out the camera. They look some look absolutely fantastic. You can try adding some colour. You could actually one thing I would like to do, and I'm not doing it yet because being on lockdown it's hard to get milk. But it'd be nice to put some milk in there. Uh, and you wouldn't need any of this rubbish underneath with the milk, the colour's already there, and that would you blow that around and you get the light and the important thing is to get the light at the side for milk because obviously it's white and you'll get some nice ridge effects using something like that I'd imagine there will be something I'm going to try at a later stage you don't have to use for all milk you can just add it to the water just to colour the water enough to give it that white effect you can use food colourings um, be wary though of using anything that's dark and the reason for that is what's capturing the texture is the shadow so therefore if you've got white milk and it's, it's coming up in little ridges and you shoot with the, the light at the side, you get that shadow and that creates all the ripples. If you've got a dark colour and you're trying, and that's why I put this card, coloured card in as well, the lighter blue, because it's quite dark colour, the lighter blue shows up the waves much better. If you've got a dark background, it doesn't work. So use something quite light. You could even try white, you know, you could put some white. That's something else I can try, is put some white paper in there and do the same thing. So whatever's underneath the water is what, what gives you the colour. So you can try different colours underneath, different bits of paper, different colours. Just play and see what you can come up with. And it's great when you're in lockdown, there's not much else you can do. It's a great little project to have a go at. All you need is a hairdryer. You don't even need hair. You don't even need hair. So something for you to have a go at. And it's answered a few questions on the, the photo that I took. All the best for me, look after yourselves, keep safe.